greatness. We are not trying to be little one or the other. But Jesus Christ, he gave us a standard. He has given us a standard. You see, he says in Matthew chapter 11, verse 11, Matthew 11, 11, he speaks about John the Baptist. John the Baptist, we call him Yahya alayhi salam. See, the Jews were expecting that before the coming of the Messiah, Masih translated Christ, Elias must come first. A prophet called Elias is supposed to have gone up into heaven, bodied before Jesus. And they believed that he was going to come back before the coming of the Messiah, the Christ. So when Jesus claimed that he is the Christ, the Masih, the Messiah, they asked him, where is Elias? So Jesus points out to John the Baptist that John the Baptist is Elias or in the spirit of Elias. And he testifies about John, Yahya alayhi salam. John, the disciple, the people who wrote, supposed to have written the Gospel of St. John, you're not talking about that. John was a common name, like Tom, Dick and Harry, you're not talking about that. I'm only talking about Yahya alayhi salam, John the Baptist. So Jesus speaks about him and he says, among those born of women, everybody is born of woman. A woman carries every human child. Among those born of women, there has not risen another greater than John the Baptist. The greatest prophets of, among Israelis, Israelis, among the Jews, was Yahya alayhi salam. That's what he said. But he says, he is greater than John. For the works, the works the Father has given me to accomplish. I mean, Allah bari ta'ala has given me greater responsibility. The responsibility of John was to prepare the way for Jesus. That makes him great. But now the responsibility of Jesus are far greater. So the greater the responsibility, the greater the honor, the greater the status. So he says he is greater than John because of the work that the Father, who is God Almighty, has given me to accomplish. So the works tells you your status. What work are you doing? Sweeper? You have your position. What are you? Foreman? You have your position. You are a manager? You have your position. You are a director? You have your position. Everyone has his position according to his responsibility. So the greater the responsibility, the greater the honor. Natural. The responsibility of Jesus was to reform the Jew. That's all. Reform the Jews. Take them out of the, out of the formalism, the ceremonialism, the hypocrisies. That's his job. To bring the Jews to the right path. That's his job. That makes him so great about John. Now the responsibility Allah gives the Holy Prophet Muhammad is to guide the whole of mankind in every aspect of human life. And Jesus Christ prophesied about this mighty messenger of God. He told his people in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 16, verses 12 to 14, he says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. You haven't got that capacity. I want to tell you a lot of things. Like the little child here, these are little children. Suppose I met them alone. What, what can I tell them? I will tell them a few stories, small stories, according to the capacity. I might have, I have a lot of things to tell people, to give, but I can't. I need the right type of people, mature people, who will understand what I'm talking about before I can open my mouth. So Jesus Christ is telling his disciples, you cannot bear them now, it means you haven't got that capacity. And the truth of that statement is written large throughout the Bible, throughout the Bible. Again and again, Jesus Christ tells his disciples, he said, ye of little faith, ye of little faith, ye of little faith, how many times? Again and again. And he explains to them as if he's explained to little children, and they can't understand. So he said, I even yet without understanding, yet, you can't understand what I'm telling you. I'm trying to explain to you like little children. And when he's provoked further by his disciples, he says, oh faithless and perverse generation, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I be? How long shall I bear with you? I'm saying that if Jesus was a Japanese instead of a Jew, he would have committed that honorable harakiri, suicide. But he's a Jew. Life is dear to him. He can't. Otherwise, as a Japanese, he's out of this world. Suicide. So what can he do? He said, I've got many things to tell you, but you can't bear it. Therefore, he said, how be it? When he, the spirit of truth, 
is come, he will guide you to all truth. For he shall not speak from himself, but what things so shall he hear? That shall he speak, and he shall declare unto you the things that are to come. He shall glorify you. We are asking our Christian brethren, these missionaries, ask them, who is the spirit of truth? They say the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. I'm asking, what did the Holy Ghost tell you in 2000 years? Problems, problems, problems. You have problems. You Christians, you have more problems than anybody else. <coughs> Solution to your problems. I was telling this lady here in the BBC radio just now. You'll hear it on Sunday morning under that, what that breakfast time. I was telling her and she was tickled. This lady was tickled. Her name is Julie Mills. See, chatting, chatting, I asked her, are you married? She said, no. I said, you see, you have a problem. <laughs> I said, you know, there are four million of your sisters and your aunties. If every Britisher gets married, still there will be four million who can't get husbands. But the same man, I'm telling her, he can keep a dozen mistresses. And he can get a dozen illegitimate children every year. And your nation, see, he's a stud. He's a stud. He's a great guy. <laughs> He's great. The guy is great. A dozen bastard children every year. Great guy. And I said, that guy, I have to pay higher taxes for his pleasures, damn it all. I said, why should he make to pay for his wild oats? Why me? Why the innocent man has to pay higher taxes for his pleasures? Those, those delinquencies be getting. Who's going to look after them? Somewhere around Liverpool, I was here on my previous visit, I'm reading the newspaper that the girls in Liverpool have gone berserk. They just want children. Anybody come, man, give us children. <laughs> I'm wondering, what, what has happened? He says, no, you see, in Liverpool, in Liverpool, the municipality says that if you have a child, they are bound to give you accommodation. You can be unemployed, but if you got a child, the municipality there is bound to give you accommodation. So he said, if we have one little brat, at least, you know, we can say, look, I want accommodation. So they said, let anybody come along, give it to us. <laughs> I said, you have problems. Look, I said, something wrong with you Britishers. I'm telling this lady, I said, something wrong with you people. I said, you know, you allow gay sodomites. In London's Hyde Park the other day, there were 8,000 sodomites, you call them gays. They gather in the Hyde Park, you know, to display the, the ways. Telling you there's something wrong with you guys. 8,000. I said, you allow sodomites? License? Yes. Between grown-ups, you have license. Lesbians? License. But the most natural thing, a man is polygamous by nature, and he wants, and there's a woman who doesn't mind sharing a husband. There's a woman who doesn't mind. The man is prepared to take on extra responsibility. They said, no. Divorce one of them or go to jail. I said, something wrong with your thinking. She said, shh, look, please. I want you to repeat that again. You see, she hadn't recorded that. <laughs> So you listen Sunday morning, <laughs> you see, she made me to repeat that. I said, look, do it in three minutes, okay? I said, okay, I'll do it to you in three minutes. She was thrilled by God because there are four million of her sisters can't get husbands. And Islam gives the answer, solution to the problems. What did the Holy Ghost tell you, I'm asking? There are a thousand different churches and denominations among the Christians. Thousand different churches and denominations. I want to know in the past 2,000 years, what did the Holy Ghost tell, tell you about how to solve the problem? You have drunkards, alcoholism. What did the Holy Ghost tell you about that? About divorce in South Africa among the whites, the second highest divorce rate in the world among the Christians. I said, what did the Holy Ghost tell you about that? Problem of race, racism. Race is of the highest order. I want to know what the Holy Ghost told you about that. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Come to Muhammad, he gives you answers, solution to all your problems. It might not go down well. You're used to a certain way of life, but if you laugh, I said, the laugh is on you. You simmer in your soup. guide you into all truth. Jesus says, I have yet many things to say unto you. Many means more than one in your language. He will guide you into all truth. All is more than one in your language. Am I right? All means more than one. Many means more than one. I said, look, I don't want more, more than one. I want only one. Just give me one new thing that the Holy Ghost gave 
you thousand million Christians in the world today, one new thing that Jesus Christ already didn't give you in so many different words. Give me one. And in 40 years, no Christian born has been able to come forward and say, look, this is what the Holy Ghost taught us. I have to solve the problem.